In this episode, I'll be discussing reducing factory noise. This is Noise Engineers Podcast, episode number 18, brought to you by Sound Solutions, an independent acoustical consulting firm found at noiseengineers.com. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me on this episode. We're, I'm going to be talking about a project we recently had installing acoustical treatment in a Mexican factory. The installation was done to reduce worker noise exposure. In this podcast, vlog, video, we'll be discussing the noise problem, the treatment options, and the expected noise reduction. So the worker noise levels in this truck assembly plant were between 85 and 95, and the primary noise sources in this plant where I'm going to be discussing was from hand tools, pneumatic hand tools that were used throughout the plant. There were other noise sources, but that was the primary source where people were getting longer term noise exposure to. The noise experienced by the workers was a combination, of course, of the direct noise and the reflected noise. So the direct noise is dependent purely on the distance from the source to the ear to the worker. And the reflected noise is based on the size of the space, the exposed, the absorption of the exposed surfaces in the area. So we looked at three different treatment options. The first was to replace the noise sources. So we looked at different types of tools that could be used instead of just these pneumatic tools. Well, there are quieter pneumatic tools that could be used, hydraulic tools, and electric, these DC tools that could be used. There's an expense in replacing the tools, but there's also an expense in changing the operation or using barriers or other acoustical treatments. So it was definitely on the table as an option. Um, the noise levels, the nice thing about reducing the or replacing the noise source is you, re, you reduce the direct and the reflected noise. And we found that the noise levels could be reduced by over 10 dB by replacing the tools. And the problem was that was to a very expensive alternative um, but by a more reasonable alternative by at least 5 dB, which was uh, an option that's being implemented. The second method we looked at was installing barriers. So the barriers would block the direct noise, and we we're looking at using a quilted MLV on a very flexible, flexible meaning um, that could be adjusted easily, metal frame. And these frames can be taken apart for maintenance and for change of the operation if needed. The barriers, they'll reduce the direct noise. Now they'll provide, if you have a noise source on one side and a person right on the other side, they'll provide the, the amount of noise transmitted through the barrier would be reduced by over 20 dB. They're, I mean, they're very effective at reducing the noise. The problem is some of the noise, especially when you get further away from the barrier, will be diffracted over the top, and some of the noise will be reflected. This doesn't affect that reverberant noise, the noise bouncing off of other surfaces, so it's just reducing the direct. And it's only for those tools on the opposite side of this barrier. So a person with a tool in their hand, this barrier isn't going to provide um, do, do much for noise reduction. For that, while that tool is being operated, it'll reduce the noise for other tools and could reduce the overall exposure. Um, and the barriers also aren't large enough to add a lot of absorption to the space. Uh, but they would be, well, they'll be more effective if there were uh, acoustical treatment, acoustical absorption put in the space to reduce that reflected noise level. So that's the third option, is installing acoustical absorption. And we chose treating uh, or adding acoustical absorption to the ceiling and to the walls. And there were, the factory had very specific guidelines as to what could be used. They had color requirements, uh, cleaning requirements, and we actually had to install samples so that it may, they could see if it met their visual um, acceptability. Uh, of course, there were also cost considerations. So we looked at uh, spray-on acoustical ceiling treatment. We also looked on at a fabric with kind of a compressed, dense fiberglass for the ceiling. We looked at a bagged, washable 
uh, sort of baffle material for the walls, a little bit more durable than the ceiling because it'll there'll be people and activity closer to those walls. We also looked at a foam with a vinyl, perforated vinyl uh, covering. So the third option, acoustical absorption. Almost all the noise pro produced eventually hits the ceiling. The noise that's exactly between the source and the receiver, that height, will hit the wall, go back to hit the, the person, that first reflection. But most all the other uh, paths will hit the ceiling at some point, hit the floor, then the ceiling. And so the ceiling's an, an obvious way to get a lot, of, a lot of absorption in a space. It's not usually abused. It doesn't have a lot of traffic near it. Um, and it's, it's exposed. So we looked at that treatment. The predicted noise reduction really depends on how much how long people are using tools right near them because this is only going to affect the reflected noise level. So it'll be great for reducing noise from tools on the other side of a wall barrier around a corner where the noise path has to be reflected. It's only the reverberant noise that they're getting exposure to. We predicted or estimated that the noise exposure in general for the workers considering the amount of time they're using their own tools or tools near them would be between four and six uh, decibels with the ceiling and wall treatments. And we're only looking at wall treatments in one area where there's parallel exposed walls. Those walls, it's a pretty small, narrow area where the walls are close to the workers and we thought we could get an effective uh, noise reduction by putting the treatment near the noise source and receiver, the worker's level. So we did a four-foot band uh, right in that range where workers are using their tools to get rid of the flutter echo, to get rid of the um, those first reflections off of the wall. Um, so we did, we have at this point just done some installations of sections, pilot, project areas so that they can be approved. We've got final pricing and we're going to be installing a full treatment uh, in about a month. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you for your interest in Noise Engineers podcast blog. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, I appreciate any feedback you have. You can find contact information at noiseengineers.com. Uh, and feel free to find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. All right, take care. Bye.